hello friends today in this video we are going to explain economies of scale and international trade uh, as per the assumption of uh, hecksher ohlian model uh, we have said that uh, both the products products x and product y are produced under constant returns to scale that was one of the assumptions of uh, hecksher ohlian model but later uh, it is argued by various economists that there is possibility to trade with increasing returns to scale if the if two nations are identical in every respect once again uh, the international trade is possible in between two nations if with increasing returns to scale if these two nations are identical in every respect in other words we can say that if two nations are having similar production and cost condition uh, then only uh, then also it is possible to have uh, trade in between these two nations and trade can happen with advantage that means both the nations can gain from trade hope uh, all of you know about what is increasing returns we know that uh, increasing returns are the returns are in increasing production returns are increasing at an increasing rate that means if inputs are doubled then output will be more than doubled if all inputs are doubled output will be more than doubled similarly if all inputs are tripled outputs will be more than tripled this increasing returns uh, can happen due to uh, different reasons one of the reason is that there is uh, if there is large scale production there will be a possibility to increasing returns to scale uh, second one uh, division of labor and specialization if the economy is producing on a large scale there is possibility to uh, apply division of labor and each labor can specialize in the production of a particular field of activity similarly uh, it is possible to have uh, specialization and productive machinery can be used that is the third reason for increasing returns to scale uh, two economists ann weiler and teffler in 2002 Uh, conducted a study and argued that uh, one third of industries are characterized by increasing returns that means increasing returns uh, in production is a is a quite common and therefore it can uh, lead to international trade uh, in this video we are going to explain the relation between economies of scale and international trade using a diagram Uh, we have uh, assumed that two nations are identical so we need a single production possibility curve in this diagram if two nations are having similar uh, conditions production conditions then we require only a single production possibility curve that's why we have drawn only a single production pos uh, possibility curve uh, we have uh, x axis and y axis on x axis we are representing commodity x and on y axis we are representing commodity y a normal shape of a production possibility curve is uh, as everybody of us know like this so that means it is concave to the point of origin but if there is economies of scale the production possibility curve will be convex to origin that is it will be like this uh, here marginal opportunity cost goes on decreasing this is the production possibility curve and normally with no trade country is producing at a particular point suppose here country is producing and they are consuming at the same point because community indifference curve is tangent at this point 
and the price ratios of commodities can be represented as the tangency line that can be drawn through this consumption point this is a straight line as we said earlier uh, this is the point point a where the firm or our nations are conducting their production and they are producing and consuming they are producing this much amount of x and they are producing this much amount of y both the nations are producing a particular quantity of x and y and they are consuming the same amount we know that uh, if marginal opportunity cost is decreasing uh, if it is increasing we will be having a production possibility curve which is concave to the point of origin but here marginal opportunity cost is decreasing and therefore the uh, marginal opportunity cost is decreasing therefore additional cost of producing x is on decrease and similarly additional cost of producing y is also on decrease that means additional x can be produced with a lesser and lesser amount of y that means if an economy want to produce more and more x of commodity it will require lesser and lesser amount of commodity y that means for the first unit suppose for the first unit of x it require two units y for the second unit of x it require only one unit y for the third unit of x it require only 0.5 unit of y in this situation a country specializes completely specializes in the production of a single commodity that is x can be fully produced and another country is producing entire quantity of y that means country 1 may be producing x and country 2 may be producing product y full of x and full of y which is produced by respective countries if uh, one country is specializing in x and other country is specializing in the production of y we can have an exchange rate between these two commodities like this this is the exchange rate where the economy can move to a higher community indifference curve here the entire quantity produced by x sorry produced by nation 1 may be x and that is being exported and initially they are in original community indifference curve 1 that is this one and here they are in indifference curve IC2 that is through specialization uh, country uh, one country may be producing the entire quantity of X and another country may be producing entire quantity of Y and this entire quantity of x a portion of this is being exported and the remaining portion is being consumed similarly a portion of y entire quantity of y is produced by other nation and a portion of it is being imported to this country therefore at the initial stage country 1 and country 2 are producing and consuming only a fixed quantity of x and fixed quantity of y and the second stage it is possible to move to point b with more x and more y after specialization and this specialization uh, is possible because of decreasing marginal opportunity cost and decreasing marginal opportunity cost or uh, production possibility curve is convex to the point of origin only if there is economies of scale or increasing returns to scale in the process of production. This is the drawing of the same diagram which is taken from uh, the uh, Salvatore's book, International Economics. And here it is clear that the initial production point is A and country is having a convex. That means initially they are producing only country 1 and country 2 are producing only 40 unit of X and 40 unit of Y. Similarly, uh, when there is specialization of commodity X, the entire quantity of x is being produced by that means entire 120 unit of x is being produced by one nation that is production of x is o b and entire quantity is produced by them and initially they were consuming only 40 unit but now they were able to consume 60 unit the remaining 60 unit is being exported 
this is being exported to other country similarly initially they were consuming only 40 units of y and now they are able to consume 60 unit of y uh, uh, by after explaining this diagram uh, there are certain additional points that we need to give importance because uh, this diagram give rise to some other questions and automatically that questions are very relevant and on the base of that questions we have uh, uh, developed it uh, to around four or five points and we will explain that one by one the first point that we need to give importance is we have said that one country specializes in the production of x and other country is specializing in the production of y but here it is not possible for us to say that which country will be producing X and which country will be producing Y. We cannot say that which country will be producing product X and which country will be producing product Y because uh, the marginal opportunity cost is, in, is decreasing to both the product X and Y and therefore we cannot say that we cannot say that uh, nation 1 is producing X and nation 2 is producing Y. We cannot say that. But the, 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 this problem in the real world is uh, solved by the historical decisions. That means suppose uh, nation 1 is producing product X historically, they will be specializing it. That means the problem which commodity is to be produced by which nation will be solved historically. Second point is to be noted here is that uh, it is not a necessary condition that two nations are identical. That means nation 1, we have said that nation 1 and nation 2 are identical, but it is not a necessary condition. They may not be identical. They may be identical or may not be identical. It is not a problem at all. Uh, trade is possible, beneficial trade is possible even if they are different in their conditions the different in their production conditions with uh, increasing returns to scale that means if increasing returns to scale is uh, in practice it is possible to have trade if the uh, there is no similarity between different nations another po important point is that uh, suppose if uh, economies of scale uh, persist for a long period that means economies of scale continuously uh, uh, there exist economies of scale for a lo long period or large period it may lead to monopoly or oligopoly uh, uh, in case of monopoly the monopoly firm is producing homogeneous product single producer and they are produ the single producer is producing entire quantity and it may also lead to oligopoly they may be producing either homogeneous product or differentiated product that means if economies of scale persist for long range of output continuous range of output then the, there is a chance to the emergence of monopoly or oligopoly this is a chance Another aspect which is to be supplemented along with this theory is that uh, suppose in, in 1980s, early 1980s, uh, increase in international trade uh, as parts and components of products. That means there, there are possibility of outsourcing and offshoring. Outsourcing means uh, buying parts from other nations for example uh, us may be out, uh, outsourcing their productive activity to india to reduce their cost similarly offshoring means uh, same plants uh, some 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 companies are uh, setting their plants outside that means an american company is setting their plant in india to produce uh, some parts of their products they are exporting uh, some machinery or something like that but its parts are being produced in india this is uh, offshoring and there are possibility of outsourcing and offshoring this outsourcing and offshoring leads to international economies of scale not only internal economies but international economies of scale 
that means economies of scale emerges that means decrease in cost emerges not only within the nation but also from outside the nation it is known as international economies of scale therefore if outsourcing and offshoring is possible in early 80s it is proved that there is international economies of scale and automatically cost can be reduced drastically these are the four major points connected with it uh, two more supplementary uh, points are here one is additional supplementary points one is economies of scale economies of scale and external economies are different not they are not equal both uh, implies decrease in average cost but uh, economies of scale refers to increase in output quantity leads to decrease in average cost this is economies of scale but external economies uh, this is applicable to a single firm first one is applicable to a single firm but here external economies decrease in uh, output average cost to the entire industry all the firms within the industry are enjoying this benefit and this is not uh, economies of scale and external economies are not similar economies of scale we have mentioned here is economies of scale not external economies Uh, another argument connected with uh, uh, this uh, economies of scale and international trade is that, uh, that linter linter's hypothesis linter's hypothesis is a is a phenomenon that is connected with international trade it is said that a nation export export a product which are most popular within the home country suppose if a country is having large domestic market uh, a nation export a product only such kind of product uh, for example there are various countries in, in international market they are having large market of their own their internal market is very strong in such a situation they are producing on large scale such commodities and exporting a portion of it and they are importing the uh, items required for the minorities may be uh, high class uh, or lower class lower income group minorities they are demanding different types of product they are importing that and the majority consumers are consuming a particular product and that is produced largely at a on a large scale basis and they are exporting that quantity uh, but this Linder's uh, hypothesis or this argument were uh, severely criticized by many others. Uh, import of production of uh, minorities and export of <coughs> production that is uh, uh, developed by Lin, uh, Linder's. Linder, uh, the economist Linder, uh, his hypothesis may not be true in many situations because uh, uh, there are th certain theoretical or practical empirical studies some countries they are they are having only christian minorities to minorities the in their nation the christians are minorities but they are exporting christmas tree because the uh, christmas tree is not at all consumed by them only a minority group consumes it even though only minority group consumes it they are producing it on large scale and exporting it therefore linda linder's hypothesis was was severely criticized by many other economists therefore in connection with uh, economies of scale and international trade these are the major points to remember